Hello friends, welcome to Mid-Morning Manna, Lonnie Mattingly here. I'm glad you're tuned in today, and I hope that you'll tune in every day, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and then you can just figure it out, Central and, and Mountain and, and uh, West Coast Time. All those times are a little bit different. Lou's and I are going each way, but I'm glad you've tuned in, and I hope you'll tune in every day and uh, take advantage of the thoughts that are given and uh, apply them in your own life personal make it personal apply it in your life at least give it an attempt give it a give it an opportunity to see if it'll work for you to help you be a growing christian a uh, a better parent or a better student or whatever it is that you need in your life see what god has for you in store every day as you search the scripture. If you don't have time to tune into this every day, at least get your Bible out and open it and read some from the word of God and spend some time in prayer on a daily basis. Let God grow you. Allow him to grow you by putting into your life the thoughts from God's word and, and having that prayer life that God can bless and guide and use you in. And I know that'll be a blessing. Well, we've got to get going with today. We're talking this week about what does Jesus need to win the world? What does Jesus need? You say, does Jesus need anything? Well, I believe he does. I believe Jesus, you know, at one point Jesus was here and he was winning people and he was training people. He was training his disciples. And then he trained, uh, he, from his disciples, he chose 12 apostles and spent time training them. And uh, so the Lord Jesus Christ needed helpers and other people to carry on the work. He was only going to be ministering there for a brief period of time. Then they were going to crucify him and he was going to ascend up to heaven. He's not here now, but what does he need here? What does Jesus need on earth for heaven's sake to win the lost to get the work done that he came to do and the price that he paid. We don't want that to be in vain for any man or any woman or any boy or girl. We want everyone to be able to have everything they need from Christ to make sure that they're ready for heaven. And uh, so there we go. So what does Jesus need to win the world? He told us, listen what he said as we as we think about this thing. We said on on uh, Monday, we talked about how Jesus needed a body, somebody, anybody, your body, my body, to be busy serving him. He is not here in a physical body today, and somebody needs to carry the good news, and that's you and me, my friend, our bodies. And now today, on this Tuesday morning, November the 1st, we're in the month of November. Halloween is behind us now. We're headed toward Thanksgiving, and that's going to be an exciting time. And so on this Tuesday, we're talking about what did Jesus, what does Jesus need? He needs a voice. He needs somebody that's going to speak up in his behalf and tell the world what he told us in this blessed old book in the word of God. And in Matthew, I'm sorry, in Mark chapter number five and verse number 18 and 19 and 20, listen what he said. It says, and when he was come to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. You see, this is talking about that story of that maniac man, that crazy man, that man that was terrorizing the city, uh, running around with not wearing any clothes and, and terrorizing people. And, and they had to put 10 dead bolt locks on their doors at night and lock their windows. And, and he, was a, he, he was just terrifying the community there. And Jesus came along. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil uh, prayed him that he might be with him. You see, the, Jesus healed this man. He cast out those demons and, and they, those demons went and went into the pig herd that was there close by, a herd of pigs. And the pigs had more brains than that man. They said, we don't want to live like this. And they went over the cliff and they all drowned themselves in the sea. So uh, whatever that's worth. Uh, and whatever help that would be. But the, my point in today's lesson is this, very simple, is his instruction to this maniac once he was healed and once he was ready to do something for God and able to do something. See, when people get saved, that's not the end of it. God wants to not only save them from their eternal destiny in hell to an eternal destiny in heaven, he wants to save them to heaven, but he wants to save them for usefulness here on earth. And one of the things that a person can do here on earth for Christ is be his voice. Let's tell people what Jesus 
told us to tell them. Let's be the voice. He's not here to speak to them verbally. They can't hear him, but you and I can take the word of God and say, here's what Jesus said about it. Here's what the word of God says about it. Here's what the Bible says about how you can be saved. And we can be a voice for the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me just go back to this now. In Mark chapter 8, verse 18, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I've got my tongue behind my eye tooth, couldn't see what I was saying. In Mark chapter 5, verse 18, he, the Bible says, and when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. He said, Jesus, I, I, I want to go with you. In verse 19, how be it? Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Jesus said, what I want you to do is go home and tell people. Go home and tell people for, on, on my behalf what I've done for you and let them know what's available to mankind as a result of, my, of what I'm going to do for them. And uh, verse 20, he says, this, this man that Jesus had, had healed him and had cast out the demons. And in Mark chapter 5, verse 20, listen what it says. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. He went, he went home and began to publish it everywhere. He began to tell everybody. Isn't that something? Some people won't tell anybody, so there are other people that have to try to tell everybody. So why don't we all team up together and say, for Jesus' sake, I'm going to tell somebody. I'm somebody that can tell somebody. I said yesterday, Jesus needs a body. He needs your body and mine to carry the good news. And we are somebody. We can be somebody for God. And I want to encourage you on that. But I also want to encourage you to be using your voice for the glory of God. You see, the Great Commission, which was given to all Christians, we were told to be his voice. Listen to what he said in the, Math in the book of Matthew and in verse uh, chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, I'm going to be the power behind you. I'm going to help you. I'm the powerful one, and I'm going to give you some instructions right now. And I think they probably listened up. He said in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, he said, Go ye therefore into and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Jesus said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go be my voice. Be my voice. Jesus needs a voice right here on earth. People that are going to speak up for him. People that are going to tell the world the good news that Jesus saves. Now, he's not just looking for a pastor here and there that'll do it. He wants all of us who are pastors, who are in the ministry or have been pastors, to tell the world. He wants us to do it, but he wants those people that sit in the pew every week and hear the good news when they leave that place to go tell somebody what God told them that day and how he wants to work through them to help others come to Christ. How important that is. Well, that's good news, isn't it? God, listen, if God told us to do it, that means he will enable us to do it if we'll give ourselves wholly to him. I hope that you will. Well, let's pray and we'll be gone. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have to tell the world, to be a voice for the Lord Jesus Christ. God, help us to speak up and be what we ought to be in that area. And Father, we give you the praise. We love you. We thank you. Help us to be the soul winners you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.